Welcome back to the office at Whitetail Ridge, everyone. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about making money on the homestead. And this right here, honestly, is something that I I will say that you know I don't want to I don't want to say that I learned it the hard way, but you you have an idea when you first decide that you're going to want to go off grid, and obviously you still have to make some money to some extent. And a lot of people just look at this and think, oh, I'm going to raise chickens and I'm going to raise pigs or cows or, you know, pick an animal. It doesn't matter because you say that, oh, this is a food source or something. And obviously everyone's always going to need to eat or they're going to want to buy chickens or, or pigs to have as pets. And while this is true, um, th this is probably the number one trap that I see people fall into. And I, I have friends and I know other people that have done this and they just repeatedly will jump from one animal to the next and not give it time to work itself out because it's just, it's not going quick enough for them. And, you know, a bit of this is, is going to be a little bit of common sense, but at the same time, one would think, well, how many how many chicken farmers can there possibly be in one area? How big of a supply is there? Well, there's your first question you're asking. And you need to go ahead and research the area that you intend to homestead on and find out what the actual, what those actual numbers are, like how many pig farms are in this area and whatnot. Whereas, you know, we, we got into pigs because it was something that when we got into it, there was a very high demand for pigs and a very low sourcing of those pigs but it seemed like almost immediately within within two years of having started doing this that the numbers just exploded and everyone has pigs everywhere and flooded the market nearly drowning us out and right now we're going through a cycle where you're seeing people that are just literally selling out of these animals because they don't know what to do with them. They had higher expectations and, and expected to, to make a, a boatload of money. Don't do that. That's the wrong answer. And it ends up hurting the markets around you, or I shouldn't say markets around you, the market around you. And it hurts the other people around you that are doing this. If they're not, um, so inclined to be prepared for things like this to happen. So, you know, with that said, we, we were somewhat prepared on, on our, our deal, knowing the market that we had and seeing the decline, we just absolutely quit selling out. We only sold out to like cr close friends and neighbors for basically meat, but we stopped selling out any kind of breeding pigs because people, too many people were flooding the market, dragging the prices down. And there was no point in selling our hard earned work and stock off into the market just because somebody says, oh, well, I can go get it cheaper elsewhere. Well, go get it cheaper elsewhere because we're not just going to throw our hard work away. So keeping that in mind, the animals, the eggs, the whatever is the, the first thing that everyone thinks, well, I'll just make money off of this. And in all reality, you need to be searching more for something almost like what I have behind me. I'm not saying go out and buy a bulldozer and I got a really decent deal on this one as is, and I needed it for work around the property, but you need to hone in on a skill that you have or that you are interested in that you can push into making an income and probably have more than one of those lying around. Whereas we have the, the bulldozer here, which is mainly meant for the property, but I will do work for, for friends, close friends that usually trade me work in, in, in turn because they also have other pieces of equipment. But, you know, moving on from that, we also have the sawmill, which we do make money off of. And I, at certain times of the year and certain, just certain products. I don't mill a lot of lumber trying to make money that way because, well, there's a lot of politics involved in that. People get very picky about lumber and they don't understand that it has to come off of the mill and be planed and do all of these different things where I just make rough cut lumber and that's it. So keeping in mind, don't jump into homesteading or even living off grid thinking that you're going to get animals and you're going to sell strictly animals and do that. You need to find something that's a little bit more of a niche, a niche, um, skill trade, whatever, and market that because, um, 
it's, it's just one of those things. I mean, I don't know how much more clear I can make it without having people just stumble into the arena and then fail. You have to find something, whether it be you own a piece of equipment or you're knitting or you have a particular knack for growing vegetables and you've already checked that market in the area that you're in and you can actually profit off of that. So, you know, and going back on that again, it's not saying that you can't make money off of animals or anything like that, but it is probably the most common thing that people pick when choosing to enter this, this lifestyle arena. And it's, it's kind of sad because people will have all these animals and then just throw them to the wayside or whatever. And it, it just doesn't work out. And they oftentimes will get discouraged doing that. So when trying to make money on the homestead or the off grid homestead or the off grid, whatever, or it doesn't matter, whatever your situation is here, keep your options open. Make sure that you investigate your particular area and don't always think that it has to be something that is directly related to your homestead here where I'm actually starting to get into, I am doing a lot more fishing, which is not uncommon of me anyway. However, I don't live far from a, a internationally known trout fishing area. And a lot of people don't have the know-how and the skill to catch those trout. And they'll come from all over the world and are just trying to catch some fish and enjoy themselves. So, I'm actually considering setting up a small guide service of just handling, you know, one or two people at a time and, and going out and taking them and showing them decent fishing spots and making sure that they catch fish that is not directly related to my homestead, but it is well within my realm of, of knowledge and skill set to make happen. So these, you know, this is just a, an example, but anyone can make money, but making that money churn and come in the way that you need to you really have to find those niche areas so i hope that by pointing this out and maybe getting people to to allow it to move around in their brain that you can't always just go for the obvious because so many people have already done it it just it it floods markets hurts markets and will cause people to get discouraged so again keep that in mind when you're trying to make money on your homestead and you know explore the possibilities don't just try to focus on what's at the farm because it's the easiest so thank you for watching don't forget to click the like button please subscribe share if you think this was helpful and we appreciate all the comments whether they be positive or negative you always have to take everything with a grain of salt because i may learn something or someone else may learn something and you know the more you know have an amazing evening everyone